Present. Senator Abdi. Senator Abdi. Senator Wheeler. Here. Senator Thomas. Yep. Senator Abbasi. Here. Senator Bejarano. Here. Senator Wickman. Here. Senator Hopwood. Here. Senator Flynn. Here. Senator Novak. Howdy. Senator Macklenburg. Here. President Trenny. Present. Vice President Maltari. Here. And myself. Wonderful. Okay, so I am just going to quickly go over what is kind of a plan for today. Um, so what we're going to be doing under presentations, we would typically do under old business, but since we have people here waiting to see how those budgets break down, I just kind of bumped them to the top of the agenda, but they're not really presentations. And so we'll actually just kind of handle it in the same way that we handled um, the CSU fee and the outdoor rec fee and stuff like that. So we're just gonna go into a discussion period and then we'll go ahead and move to a vote on those. But so that's just a quick clarification. We actually don't have any presentations today. And then after we handle that, we will just carry on with the meeting as normal. Um, any questions on that? No? Wonderful. We will be utilizing the roll call voting method again today unless there is no dissent on anything, just to make sure we're transparent there. So that is our plan. Okay. So first on our agenda, we have the intercollegiate athletic fee. Is there any points of discussion on the intercollegiate athletics fee? Any points of discussion? Any points um, of discussion? Uh, Senator Novak. Yeah, so um, if this is in relation, uh, if I understand this correctly, this is in relation to the uh, athletics fee that came in requesting the increase from um, $4 to $4.08 with a 2% increase, correct? I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I do remember that it was the 2% increase. Okay, so with regards to that specific, uh, with regards to that specific increase in request, I believe that given the information that they presented to us, it did not seem that they had any solid reasoning whatsoever as to why they required that. And it seemed to me like they were just asking for money for the sake of asking for money. And I personally, uh, I personally did not see just cause as to why that allocation would be necessary. And currently I'm not in favor of allocating them their requested increase. Thank you. Are there any other points of discussion? Any other points of discussion? Any other point? One. Um, I'm sorry, is that Senator Stiff? Okay. Yes. I was just wondering if they're here today to like answer questions we might have. Um, they are here today, but they're it's different than the other budget proposals. They're not able to appeal or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Are there any other points of discussion? Senator Novak. Uh, can I actually propose an amendment related to my last point of discussion? I would like to uh, I would like to amend the allocated amount to a zero percent increase. Okay, so I think flat rate. what you want is to do a motion, not an amendment first, because you didn't present any motions. Oh, sorry. Yes, uh, I would motion that we uh, give them a zero percent increase. Okay, so you move to um, to change the recommended allocation from. 2% increase to 0% increase. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Would you be able to put that in the chat, please? Yes, indeed. So Senator Novak has motioned to change the recommended um, allocation from a 2% increase to a 0% increase. Is there a second? Second. A second. Um, I saw a second from Senator Flynn. Uh, 
Okay. So now we are going to enter a period of discussion on this motion in particular, meaning that your two um, talking points will start over at this time. So Senator Novak, since you made the motion, would you like a chance to speak on your motion first? Yeah, so um, I kind of covered my rationale previously, but I believe that um, when they came in and presented to us, they did not demonstrate a necessity for that increase. Uh, I did not see any reason as to why they would need that increase and going off of our philosophy of wanting to save the students as much of a burden as possible. It does not seem that it is at all necessary for us to allocate this. Um, if somebody has information as to why this is extremely necessary to them, that could change things. But as of right now, I do not see any just rationale as to why they require the additional $27,000. Thank you. Next up, I have Senator Flynn. I saw you first as seconding. Would you like to speak on your second? Yeah, um, so my concern with this increase is it seems it, it seems to just be the exact two percent, and the future their future plans appear to be increasing at six percent next year and six percent the year after, according to their presentation that they put in. If that was their plan, why aren't they doing it all at once? It it seems like right now would be a disadvantageous time for them to pass a vote for um, an increase because the students that are on campus and would be likely to vote right now would be less likely to vote for such an increase. So it, it feels a little odd to me. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other points of discussion on this motion to move it to 0%. Any other points of discussion? One second, I see something in the chat. Senator Sweeney. I had mentioned this in the uh, student affairs meeting, committee meeting, but you know, to say just because we're the lowest doesn't mean or isn't a good justification to say, hey, let's raise it. And then as Senator Flynn had said, they plan on jacking it up every year. Sounds to me like they're trying to get around having to put it to a student Senate vote, which is kind of hokey to me. Sounds like they're trying to skirt the system and it just doesn't seem right. I mean, bottom line, if my electric bill is lower than everybody else around me, is that justification to raise my electric bill? No, we should not approve this. Thank you, Senator Sweeney. Are there any other points of discussion on this motion? Any other points of discussion? Any other points of discussion? Any other points of discussion? Seeing no other points of discussion, we are going to go ahead and move to a vote. Is there any dissent to Senator Novak of changing the al recommended allocation from 2% to 0%. Is there any dissent? Any dissent? Any dissent? Seeing no dissent, this motion does pass unanimously and the recommended allocation has switched from 2% to 0% on a vote of Of 28 to zero to zero. Okay, so with that, we do conclude that piece of business and we are going to go ahead and move on to the student health fee. Are there any points of discussion on the student health fee? Any point of order? State that. Uh, weren't we supposed to vote on the actual adoption of the budget? Um, well, when we voted on the, I believe when we voted on the motion that then stood as, um, let's see, is John here? I am here. Wonderful. Could you answer that question, please? 
Please phrase the question again. I was looking at Robert's rules for something else. Do we need um, to vote one more time on it? So Absolutely. if you just voted on an amendment to the main motion, you then need to vote on the main motion. Okay, understood. I apologize. Um, so that motion has passed and that has become now the new allocation, which is that 2% recommended amount. Is there any dissent to passing um, that um, new motion, which now stands at the line item at 0%? Is there any dissent? Any dissent? Any dissent? Seeing no dissent, um, that does pass again on a vote of 28 to 0 to 0. So now we will go ahead and move on to the next one. Thank you for that correction, Senator Flynn. Um, next up, we will be talking about the student health fee. Are there any points of discussion on the student health fee? Any points of discussion? Um, Senator Gabbard. I just had a quick question. Are we going to be viewing a presentation done by them or? We already that? did. We already did. Okay, perfect. Thank yep. you. Are there any other points? Um, President Trenny. Um, following similar arguments, I move a 0% increase. I amend the recommendation to a 0%. All right. Would somebody be able to put in the chat what the original um, request was for? 1.71%? Okay, um, so President Trenny motions to change the request allocation from a 1.71% increase to a 0% increase. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Um, all right, Senator Flynn seconds. Um, we'll now begin discussion on that. President Trenny, you made the motion. Would you like to speak on your motion? Sure. Um, as we used the, the previous argument, I, I think in a non-COVID year and just in general, they, you know, every area, including athletics, should get that increase. I just think right now there's no justification that Senate was given other than we offer all these great things and, you know, our costs are going up, yes, but they do have a $1.2 million reserve. And I'm not saying future Senates and student government should say, make sure your reserve is a zero. Student health services in other areas should have a reserve as a rainy day fund and stuff like that. But I believe the $20,000 they've gained from the 1.71% increase, they could eat in that reserve in one year. Like I said, I think in a non-COVID year, 100% agree with the increase, you know, in a non-COVID year. I just think right now, looking at the impact of everything else happening at the institution, this is one area where we've been screaming affordability to the university for so long, and we should do that. Um, and again, nothing on the fee areas. Um, I think they can just eat that $28,000 for a year. I yield. Yeah. Um, Senator Flynn, would you like to speak on your second? Uh, yield to redundancy. Okay. Are there any other points of discussion? Senator Novak. Yeah, so um, I would actually like to say that I am opposed to this uh, to this motion to change it because I believe that the student health services offers a very essential service to our students on campus, and I feel that um, the amended the uh, sorry not the amended but the requested amendment or no the requested amount to be granted. Um, would be very useful to them going forward, especially coming out of COVID, when I believe that it will be very useful to have a well-funded and capable health center, especially with um, COVID vaccines potentially still being rolled out into next year. Um, in addition to that, uh, I strongly prescribe to the idea that you previously talked about at last week's meeting of COVID cuts are bad cuts. And I do not think that um, actions taken, the, uh, the idea that they were able to eat into a lot of funding over this last year um, should affect how we think about them going forward in the future. Um, and I do think that it's, it's, a very, it's a very reasonable request that they have made and I am in favor of their request. 
Thank you. President Trenny. Yes, to the previous speaker, COVID cuts are bad cuts, but if you refer back to what I said and something that kind of frustrates me is that it's taken out of context, COVID cuts are very much bad cuts when a department or area doesn't have anything to fall back on. So when, when the previous speaker mentioned that a well-funded student health services is $20,000, it's not gonna hurt. They have 1.2 million in the reserves. And by the way, per their budget, they automatically have to put $155,000, I believe, in, in the reserves. So they have more money in their budget that they can, again, use for a year to minimize the impact on students. And when we asked that question last, when they presented three weeks ago or whatever, and sorry, yes, it was 1.45%. The 1.71 is with the enrollment decrease. Um, so it's up 1.45%. But um, when I asked the question, what would it look like if you didn't get a, a didn't get a, um, if you got a um, fee freeze this year, um, there was never mentioned anything was getting cut. So, um, and when you mentioned COVID as well, most of that's recouped by the state anyways. That's nothing that comes out of their budget. So again, for a year, like I said, a normal year, sure, give them the increase. But when they have literally a big reserve account that's gone up every year, even at a 0% increase, they're fine. It's not a cut. And again, COVID cuts are dumb cuts, but it's a dumb cut when they don't have anything to fall back on. AK, if you draw back to last week or whatever, areas in the SAFI don't have an area to draw back on other than our reserves, but some areas do have other revenue and they do have a reserve account that they can use. So I yield. Are there any other points of discussion? 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 Seeing no discussion, we are gonna go ahead and vote on this motion to amend the um, recommended allocation. So is there any dissent on the motion to move the recommended allocation from the 1.45% increase to the 0% increase? Dissent. There is dissent, okay. Um, because there is dissent, we are gonna go ahead and have a roll call vote. Okay, Senator Bigged. Can you just say one more time what we are voting on? Just to yes. be clear, I'm so sorry. That's okay. We're voting on the adoption of this motion, um, which is to move the recommended allocation for student health services from a 1.45% increase to zero. No. Um, Senator Abdi. Senator Abdi. Senator Gustafson. Senator Gustafson. Senator Gabbard. No. Senator Vondra. No. Senator Alimo. Yes. Senator Mendonca. Yes. Senator Parte. No. Senator Salim. Yes. Senator Nemo. No. Senator Hawk. Yes. Senator Khan. Yes. Senator Pham. Senator Pham. Senator El Sadi. Senator Alsadi. Senators, I really need you to be ready to go so we can keep moving through this budget discussions. Senator Alsadi. Senator Albera. Senator Albera. Senator Osman. No. Senator Stiff. Yes. Senator Nelson. Senator Nelson. Senator Sweeney. Yes. Senator Ruiz. Yes. Senator Wheeler. Yes. Senator Thomas. Yep. Senator Abbasi. Yes. Senator Bejarano. Yes. 
Senator Whitman. Yes. Senator Hopwood. Yeah. Um. Actually, no. I don't know why. I just said yes because I thought I'm. I want no. <laughs> Sorry. Senator Flynn. No. Senator Novak. No. Senator Mecklenburg. Yes. President Trenny. Yes. Vice President Altari. Vice President Maltari. I said yes. Sorry. Again. All right. I'm going to call for those senators one more time. Senator Gustafson. Yes. Senator Pham. Senator Pham. Senator Alsadi. Senator Alsadi. Senator Obera. Senator Obera. Senator Nelson. Senator Nelson. Okay. On a vote of 17 to 9 to 0, this motion does pass. So now we are going to go ahead and vote on the um, allocation as a whole. So now the allocation has changed from originally the 1.45 to the 0%. Um, is there, are there any points of discussion on um, this allocation? Any points of discussion? Any points of discussion? Any points of discussion? Seeing none, we are going to go ahead and move to a vote. Is there any dissent on the student health services allocation of a 0% increase? Any dissent? Any dissent? Any dissent? Seeing no dissent, I assume unanimous consent and student health services um, has received an allocation of a 0% increase. on a vote of 26 to zero to zero. All right. So next we are going to go ahead and move on to the technology fee. Are there any points of discussion on the technology fee? Um, I believe President Trani put the proposed increase in the chat. Any points of discussion? Any points of discussion? Any points of discussion? Seeing no discussion, we are going to go ahead and move to a vote. Is there any dissent to approving the recommended allocation of a 4.5% increase for the technology fee? Is there any dissent? Any dissent? Any dissent? Seeing no dissent, I assume unanimous consent, and this motion is passed on a vote of 26 to zero to zero. Okay. okay, so that does go ahead and conclude our presentation section of the meeting, and we are gonna go ahead and open the floor up for open forum at this point. Is there anybody here for open forum? Um, I am Martin J. Caruso. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to remind you all that we do have an event for Maverick Adventures this evening at 7 p.m. on our Facebook page, and that's part of our Mankato Adventure speaker series. Uh, tonight's guest is Laura Peterson, who is a graduate of the uh, Masters of Experiential Education program here at MSU. Uh, she's going to be speaking about her time um, with ecotourism in Africa and how she's been able to cultivate connections and use her experiences there in her current position as the Executive Director of the Living Earth Center. So anyway, we hope to see some of you tune in tonight. That's going to be at 7 p.m. on our Facebook page. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, next up, I have um, Wendy Shu. Hi, I just wanted to follow up. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when we presented, we talked about the COVID vaccine and when and if uh, we would be able to uh, get any allocation at Student Health Services, and that uh, is happening. So we're hoping that we will be able to provide some more information soon to our students and our employees about uh, getting access to that uh, vaccine right here on campus. So that's great news. Thank you. Um, next up, I have Senator Vondra. Hi there, give me a moment, I need to... <clears throat> uh, yes, I think this is the place where I do this. Uh, I would like to motion to amend something previously adopted. Um, okay, what is the specific motion you're putting forth? I am going to, I am motioning to amend the theater line item in the, bu in the budget. You are motioning to amend it? Yes. So, do I, need to give, do I need to give an amount? Um, no, because my understanding, because that motion was passed and then the overall budget was passed and we're not conducting um, that business on that same day, that you are unable to make that motion. Hmm. Okay. Is that correct, John? That's my interpretation of Robert's rules. I'm looking at another section of it. He's bringing up another section. There is the motion to reconsider, but then there's also the motion to amend something previously adopted. Okay. Um, so Senator Vondra, while John looks that up, I would rather- for, have, It would come up in new business. So let's- I was gonna say, I'd rather have you bring this up in new business. So do you mind postponing this discussion while we can get a finalized answer for you and we'll continue on with the forum? Of course, yes, that, that makes sense to me. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Vice President Johnson. So I'm uh, here to just uh, meet you all and talk with you a little bit today. No, I guess I've met you before. A um, couple of really exciting things happening this summer. We're working on what we call Flexing 2.0. And what the concept behind Flexing 2.0 is, what have we learned from Flexing and, to, and what, what can we do to make it better? In some cases, no investment of money. In some cases, we were gonna, are going to invest some amount of money to improve the experience for students and the ability for faculty to deliver from Flexing. So I want to let you know about that. And if you, or as a Senate has ideas or thoughts, things you've been in these classes, you've said, this really works well, or boy, that doesn't work well at all. Um, I would love to hear from you individually, and I can put my email. I think most of you know how to get a hold of me, but if you don't, feel free to contact me directly, and I'll put you in, in touch with the team who's working on that project. The other one we're working on is another one we, uh, we're calling at this right now, FlexSync Meetings. And uh, for those of you that experienced the beginning of the semester, this semester where we were kind of partly in a room and partly not in a room and how much harder that is than just Zoom or just being in a room, that's a challenge we're going to face, I think, next year when we start seeing people coming back, but not everyone. So we're working on another initiative to try to zero in on how do we hold meetings that are hybrid meetings. And by that, I mean not in a Zoom and also not in the room altogether. Um, so that's another project I wanted you to know about. The other one I wanted to talk, I have three more things. I'm going really fast. Um, Esports, what we're doing is reaching out to new students. And um, we would encourage you to do the same. If you are hearing people that are interested in our university, even if they're a few years back, um, we're, we're having some open houses uh, for um, both virtual and in person about esports and trying to see if we can find students who are interested in coming to MSU because of the esports um, adding. And what we're going to do is add sports to the esports <laughs> portfolio this year, too. So we have four sports this year. We're going to try to get up to at least seven next year. And again, we're looking for input. If people know things that would be really helpful. And we're also talking to incoming students or prospective students about that. So pretty exciting. We're also going to have on April 26th from five to eight, I'll put that in the chat when I get done talking. Um, Buffalo Wild Wings is going to have a meet and greet and a fundraiser for us at the Buffalo Wild Wings. If you can come and, and they're going to do it distance and they're going to follow all the rules. Um, and that's for, and they're going to feature every, I think that's a Tuesday. Some of you have to correct me on that. They're going to feature our sports 
and Bethany's eSports on their monitors, even not just that week, but all weeks uh, for a period of time. So if you're interested in coming to a, a meet and greet and a fundraiser related to eSports or inviting, again, prospective students, where we'd really encourage you to encourage others to participate in that. Um, the other one we're doing, of course, is we're rolling out the multi-factor authentication for students and faculty. It's going extremely well. And we thank you for your support. And if you've had a chance to talk to people and continue to encourage them, it's a great way to secure their personal uh, information, but also secure the tenant, the place where all of our, our things are stored. Uh, we're also recommending to students and employees before you leave, if you're gonna come back especially, but before you leave, reset your password. Uh, at the beginning of COVID, I solicited the central office that stop the password changes. We can't handle password changes in the middle of all the rest of these changes because password changes sometimes are difficult with the star ID. But now we're saying do it voluntarily and get it because at some point they're going to turn that switch on and say, you haven't changed for some period of time over a year where they're going to force a change. Change your password. It's good practice anyhow. Uh, maybe when you do your multi-factor, change your password. So we're encouraging that before the end of the semester, if possible, for especially for people who are gone in the summer. We'd hate to have it be when you're not here and then not be able to get the support you need from us. But we also will be available all summer to help you. So I think that's it. I have probably have more, but I don't want to take too much time. I, don't, I didn't do 10 minutes, did I? Nope, you're good. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the thank support you. all year. Thank you. Um, are there any, is there anyone else here for open forum? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, we are going to go ahead and move on. So we have nothing on the consent agenda today, so we're going to go ahead and skip that and move straight into officer reports. President Trenny, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I have a couple things, um, and Senators, please pay attention because there are some dates in here. Again, not as many as the previous times. Um, so we opened up today at 4 p.m. our transition um, form, I guess we call it. So it's on our Engage page, and I'll maybe share my page here, or screen here in a minute. Um, but basically, uh, every senator and coordinator and executive is required to do a transition report, even if you're running again for next year, you still have to do one. Um, and so there's a form you'll have to fill out. Basically, you'll upload a page or two Word doc, um, basically explaining, um, quite, like I have questions on there. Um, so I'll link that out and email everyone, but everyone does have to do it, even if you're running again. If you don't do it, um, you will revoke your guide cords, basically, uh, even if you're running again. Um, and those will be due, I believe, April 21st at midnight. So that's our last meeting, the, the day of our last meeting at midnight. And that's where, I, again, everyone has to do it, even if you're running again. And coordinators have to do two, unfortunately. They have to do one for their position and one as a senator. Um, those are critical as well because we put them in the Teams folder. So those people next year will be able to see stuff what you did. And also the reason why you may ask, well, if I'm running again, why do I need to do it? It's a good idea every year you end a position and continue like a new term to put your thoughts down and reflect from the year, years past. So others in the years after can look at the year of COVID-19 and look at what we did as student government, what you did specifically, and know what we did during a pandemic. So really it's a good idea to put what you, your successes and failures and whatever on paper so others can learn from you, even if you're going to be here next year. And so again, I'll probably send this in an email that will be due April 21st at midnight. The other thing happening is our RSVP for the banquet and administrators in the room as well. You will be invited as well. Um, you'll get an email from our office manager at a later date. But our banquet is April 28th at 530. So that's um, the last April in the last Wednesday in April. And the reason why 5.30, um, the new Senate, so if you're elected to next year, they will meet just to elect the speaker that day. And so we wanted, it probably will maybe take an hour, I don't know. Um, so we put 5.30 as a time in which people who need to be at home in Mankato to do the meeting or at school can transition to the ballroom where we'll have the event. So it's April 28th, 5.30 p.m. in the CSU ballroom. Um, I have an RSVP, RSVP form for that as well. We need that for contact tracing, but also food allergies and just to know if you're coming or not and how you're coming. I will say, if you're not planning on coming in person, we will have a Zoom component because we're going to do like awards and stuff like that. So you'll just zoom in for that part of it. And then you can leave after, of course, while we're eating and socializing and stuff like that. But again, hopefully everyone can come if you can. Um, and that'll be April 28th at 530 in the ballroom. The other event happening this month is the inauguration of next year's student government. And that is April 22nd 
I think at 4 or 5 p.m. I'll have to clarify the time. And that will also be in the ballroom. Traditionally, in years past, we've done that on that last Wednesday. So the April 21st would be our last Senate meeting, and it is as the student government. Um, but because we couldn't get the ballroom, we moved it to the next day. Um, so it'll be that Thursday again in the ballroom. And everyone here is invited. Even if you're not running again, we'll have appetizers. Um, and we'll be giving out our awards of Administrator of the Year, Vic Swenson, Dwayne, or Teacher of the Year. So we'll be giving out other awards as well. So it's a good time to come come hang out and really um, you know, celebrate the end of our term and really celebrating the next year's leaders. So again, April 22nd, 4 or 5 p.m. I'll clarify that in an email in the ballroom. The other event that's happening this month, and this is going to happen on April 24th, that's a Saturday. And Kara, our speakers, first of all, I'm already roping you into this. <laughs> so we do something every year called Pedal Pass Poverty. And so basically, I forget who sponsors the program, and I, David Collins not on here. But Barnes & Noble gives student government $1,000 in our budget to basically, we, we give it to them. And Pedal Pass Poverty is basically pedaling to get rid of poverty, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. I've never done it. <laughs> you basically go, and John's done it. John, if you want, I will yield to John quickly if he wants to explain what it is. <laughs> if he's there. Sure. Pedal Pass Poverty is for Partners for Affordable Housing. Uh, it's, uh, there are 10 racers on a bike, um, on stationary bikes that uh, take turns and ride for 20 minutes. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a good time. So I've participated every year. So, And yep. uh, um, Barnes & Noble sponsors the student government team. Yep, so that'll be, again, April 24th. I don't have the times yet, but I do need seven other people to come. We need 10 people. I'm one. Vice President Maltari is one. And now Speakers Versal is unfortunately another one. <laughs> um, the benefit you do get is you do get a shirt, a free shirt from them. So again, just send me a message over Zoom if you're able to. It'll be in Man You can, I think, do in Mankato or online. I don't know 100%. But if you're interested at in all in helping out like that, please let me know and I will... Um, take your name and email you more information about it. So again, just message me on Zoom on that one. Um, tomorrow is our meet and confer with President Downport and his cabinet. Again, for those that don't know, meet and confer is when student government meets with President Downport and his entire cabinet, and we meet and confer about issues facing students. Um, tomorrow, I think we'll be talking about, I'll pull it up real quick because I forgot. <laughs> we'll be talking about um, the online differential um, budget updates from the university, We'll be talking about student fees, so the stuff we just did tonight and formally, you know, presenting that to President Downport and his cabinet. Um, what else do we have? Sorry, let me pause real quick. Okay, sorry, sorry for the pause. Um, we'll be talking about the SIRSA and the um, money from the federal government, tuition. Um, we'll be talking about um, the two motions we did last week related to really looking at academic related funding and staff, and then the reporter resolution and then student fees in general. Um, we'll also be talking about online differential, student government elections, parking, um, bias incident support and advisory team, and then graduation and ITS, of course, with their updates. We'll also be hearing some COVID-19 stuff as well um, at that meeting for again, that's 1130 to one tomorrow. Please shoot me a message on Zoom if you're interested on that as well. And I will forward you right away the Zoom information. Um, the last thing, and I it wasn't presented at open forum. Um, ooh, I don't have it. The return to learn team, which is um, basically the whole body that advises the university on COVID-19. Um, I'm part of the return to learn advisory group, which advises the president, President Downport and the cabinet, the university cabinet um, on COVID-19. Um, we meet, I think every week or every other week. Um, some good news for net, well, it's, it's some weird news. And David, our Vice President Johns, if, or Dr. Wendy Shu, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong as well for some of these things. So classrooms next year, just as an update, MDH has said that desks will be three feet apart. Um, and then I think if you're not in the classroom, it's six feet again, I believe. Um, and then regardless of vaccination, you still have to social distance and wear a mask, even if you've gotten it. Um, and then the university is still, I believe, looking at vaccines and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's the only updates I have for that. So I just want to give that as an update um, for COVID-19. So with any questions, I yield. Wonderful. Um, I just want to say that President Trenny prepared to get outpedaled because I'm feeling very speedy. So 
I'm coming to I'm coming to win. Um, <laughs> are there any questions for President Trenny? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, seeing none. Vice President Moltari. Hello, everyone. Uh, so for my update, President Trenny already mentioned federal for poverty. Uh, we would definitely need some volunteers, which is great. Uh, we the reflection task force reflection task force met on last Thursday. Uh, it was me, um, me and my co-chair Moses Langley, Mark Constantine, Kelvin Klink, Hamdi from International Center, and we had a really good discussion about how the new meditation space should look like. Reflection space. I am not sure if I'm using the proper term. Um, we are still working on it and trying to figure out what are the key factors involved in it, and we are trying to make it inclusive for everyone. Uh, we are going to meet on. We are going to meet tomorrow again at 2 p.m. If anybody is interested, they're more than welcome to give me their input. Allison as well. Uh, Allison is the CSU board chair who's also in the meeting. Um, another update I have is Goal Area 7's been moving forward with all their you know, wrapping up with all their discussions and stuff. And we are going to come up with a good document with proper terminology soon. Uh, I think the final document should be out by May, sometime in May, which is pretty soon. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And there will be a presentation about it. One of the most important uh, updates I had was President's Commission on Status of Women has started something called crowdfunding. They are looking for donations and they are also do giving, like they're trying to make sure that um, women's sanitary products are, or something like giving, and they're giving out uh, products in different areas of school, like food pantry, and I think in women's center in different areas as well. Um, yeah, so if you, I'll share the link with you and you can read more about it. Um, and ISA debate is tonight. So if you are an international student or you want to look like, if you want, if you want to see who the future, like who are the candidates for International Student Association elections, please join the uh, debate and ask them good questions. And some of you might have received gift cards today. I kept my promise. And yeah, thank you for participation. Uh, with that, I yield. Wonderful. Are there any questions for Vice President Maltari? Any questions, any questions, any questions? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move on to mine. I have very little for you guys today. Um, my biggest one is just a reminder, we're heading into these last few crunch weeks of the semester. Um, and now that we're kind of moving out of budget season, I just wanna make sure that we're still going to committee, that we're still showing up on time, that we're finishing those last duties to serve out the rest of your term fully. Um, and make sure that we're kind of wrap, starting to wrap up those projects. And either if you can't conclude it this year, that you're putting the steps um, that come next in your transition report. And if you can conclude it this year, that you're working to make sure that that gets done. Um, so yeah, just a quick reminder to keep doing the work that you guys have been doing all year and we're in the home stretch. And then the only other thing, oh, I have one other, two other pieces. Um, President Trenny brought up the transition reports and how they're important from transitions of Senate, but they are also super vital when we have vacancy senators come in. That's one of the best resources that I can point them to. Um, and we need more than one for each position so that they can, of course, see like different perspectives and different projects that people have been working on. Um, so I highly, 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 highly um, request that you guys get those done and make sure that those are done on time because those really do make a big difference. And as you can tell, this year we had a lot of vacancies. And so especially when people are coming in like mid second semester, any resources that we can give them is very much appreciated. So make sure you get those done. Um, and then finally, I believe our Dean slash Vice President of the day is Dr. Valtzos. I got an email, so if I'm wrong. <laughs> I accept that, but I think it's you. It is me. Ah, we did it. <laughs> I am 
delighted to be with you all today. Thank you very much for the invitations. And as you've noted, I try to attend as often as I can, even when I'm not on the schedule. I have to say, I have just really been impressed by the work that you all have done it as, as a group. Um, every week you come together, you debate issues better than some faculty debate issues. It, you take your work seriously and you are all juggling so many other responsibilities. So I just want you to know that I think you, you're great I love the fact that you give your time and your energy to this institution and to your fellow students. Thank you for that. Thank you for, for just keeping yourself going and your friends going in this really, really difficult year. We're looking forward to a fall semester. I'm not going to call it normal, but I am going to say it's going to be more comfortable than what we've been experiencing this year. I'm really starting to feel optimistic. I'll just throw in one more plug. I'm sure Wendy's on my on my side on this one. If you are eligible for a vaccine, and at this point, everyone in this room is, please try to get a vaccine. Um, I, we're not forcing anyone to get one, but it is in everyone's best interest to get herd immunity. One by one, we will take care of each other and keep everyone safe from this pandemic. So um, it's really hard to get on the lists right now. I can testify to that. Don't give up on that though. Um, I would like us all to stay healthy. I'm sure we've all known people who've gotten sick with this virus and it is just, it's not, it's awful. So I, I care about all of you and I wanna keep you healthy. I want you to keep your friends and families healthy. And with that, I will get off my soapbox. But thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Y'all have a great evening. Thank you. And thank you so much, Dr. Retzos, for your kind words. I think at this point in the semester, everyone could use a little affirmation and a little boost. And so we very much appreciate it. Um, with that, are there any questions for me or Dr. Retzos? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, seeing none, we are going to move on to Senator reports, starting with Senator Gabbard. Hi, yes, so for my Senator report, um, don't have much. Um, my project this semester was to integrate film and media students into the video production program on campus, which is run by IT Solutions. Um, and so we planned to hire someone um, as a job and then someone else through an internship. Um, and that was halted because of a budget freeze. Um, but now that that budget has passed, we're hopeful that we can implement um, those programs in the fall. And I've been working with Senator Khan and um, Robert Peterson on getting that, um, getting that to move forward. And I think that's all I have. Thanks. Wonderful. Are there any questions for Senator Gabbard? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Seeing none, Senator Stiff. Hi, everyone. So my Senator report this week is basically I've gotten some good news as far as um, the off-campus housing. Still been talking to Jack from Summit and we have discussed possibly moving forward with like um, adding more community resident or community resident advisors. So that is my Senate report for today. Wonderful. Are there any questions for Senator Stiff? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Um, Senator Asadi. Um, yes, uh, Senator Stiff. Is it community advisors for like um, the summit, like next to Quick Trip? Are you talking about? Yes, so I live in Summit, which is why I'm talking about working with Jack. But yes, yeah, so they already have like community advisors, but those are more so people that just like work at the facility. But I'm more so talking about people who can like actually help residents here with issues that they might be facing. Um, and as far as issue, like roommate issues, issues with rent and issues with getting their deposits back. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, okay, seeing none, we're going to go ahead and move on. Next, I have Senator Pham. Uh, 
Hello? Yep. Hello. Awesome. Um, so um, my center report is not much. I will uh, give update on my... Um, <clears throat> so my project was trying to form a study group, but uh, over the project, I'll be able... I work more with um, math pass program and just like dig in more like what we do and I just help to, I guess, spread the word within the student community and I was working with International Student Center. So I was able to like, I guess, encourage students to, to be more aware of it and and Yes, that, for that, <laughs> I think that's all I have for now. Thank you. Any questions for Senator Fiam? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? All right. We are going to move on to Senator Wickman. All right. Hello, everybody. I have a couple updates to present to you guys. Um, I'd like to first start out by um, presenting a couple pictures of ideas that I am going to be submitting in my proposal for our um, fraternity rock or fraternity and sorority rock garden on campus. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you here so I can show you my presentation. All right, so we have um, two options that we're looking at. The first option would be getting one large rock somewhere on campus um, that each fraternity or sorority would be allowed to paint. Um, and they would uh, have that painted with whatever they put on it for a time being. Um, this is an example of one we found. Um, this is another example of one we found. Um, our other option that we are thinking is um, a bunch of smaller sized rocks um, that belong to each individual fraternity and sorority. Um, and you can see those here. These two slides I found were from the University of Tampa. I have a meeting next week with their um, fraternity and sorority life advisor to discuss um, logistics and implementation and funding on how they um, did that portion of their project. Um, and then um, this past week, I had the opportunity to have a meeting with Bruce Lieberman, the supervisor of grounds on campus. Um, he directed me towards several other administrative staff members on campus who would have to approve, approve this project. Um, thus far, I have sent out several emails and they have all, um, everyone I've emailed has been receptive to the idea. So in the coming weeks, I will be looking to get approval from the remaining administration that needs to be contacted and made aware, um, as well as developing a proposal to submit to Dr. Jones. Um, there's still a few things left to iron out on my project, but um, it feels like I'm making some good progress and I'm excited for my uh, final Senator report here in a few weeks to hopefully inform you all of uh, the success of the proposal and the planning. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for Senator Wickman? Any questions? Um, Senator Novak. Uh, I would just like to know if there has been any thought put into a selection of a location for the rock garden. Yes, um, myself and uh, I'm working with Senator Gustafson on this project as well. Um, before. At the end of fall last year, we went and identified several green spaces along or around the library that we think would uh, suit uh, a location for this project. Um, when I was discussing this with uh, Bruce, the supervisor of grounds, he did bring up a good point that we do have to be aware that unfortunately we there could it could be vandalized so we have to be thoughtful of putting it somewhere where there might be cameras that can watch it. Um, and stuff like that. But yes, uh, we have narrowed in on a few sites, but uh, nothing specific as of right now. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Any others? Seeing none, we are going to go ahead and move on. Um, next to Senator Mecklenburg. All right, so I am working on the LGBT learning community project with Senator Novak and Senator Osman. And currently we have reached out to Jean Clark, who is a learning community coordinator. And she said that we she would look into the LGBT learning community and that it's been an interest, but they never actually started looking and that they were gonna look if there was funding available for 
and LCC. So as of right now, we have to make a proposal that would be presented in October of 2021, and it would be for the following academic year. So we've kind of hit a little bit of a lull, but I think we're going to start working on a proposal more for the fall because it's not due till October. Thank you. Are there any questions for Senator Macklenburg? Any questions, any questions, any questions? Seeing none, we're gonna move on to Senator El Sadi. Um, before I start my Senate report, um, this is my second Senator report. So is it going to be my last one this semester or do I get the um, chance to speak again? Well, it's your last required one, but you can always let me know if you'd like to speak more. So basically, uh, I'm going to elaborate since my last senator report, where I mentioned that uh, engaging is my main uh, aim after getting a seat on in the student body. Um, so me and the dean actually, I mean, it was the dean's initiative, but um, he started an SBS um, student advisory board, um, which is on the school's website uh, when you go to social and behavioral uh, studies department. Um, since uh, the department is very broad, so we kind of, I kind of want to do like a, like a club for for this whole, for this uh, large department. So this is a very good step for this uh, for this goal. Um, so this, uh, what this advisory board does basically is we have weekly meetings, one with the dean and uh, one with uh, um, uh, Elise, which uh, she is the um, events coordinator in our department. Uh, uh, so basically one with them and one without them. Um, so our members didn't really uh, finalize the fact that they want to do an R, uh, they want to turn it to an RSO, but I'm going to mention this in the, in my transition uh, report, hopefully next semester, we'll see um, the SBS student um, advisory board as an RSO since it gets funding and we can do events and we can just, um, gather all the SBS students together. Uh, and uh, if the next semester is more comfortable, that would be um, a better idea than just having it as an informal body. So yeah, my main goal basically to sum it up is to have the SBS Student Advisory Board to become an RSO next semester. Yeah, with that, I yield. Thank you everybody for listening. Wonderful, thank you. Are there any questions for Senator El Sadi? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, seeing none. I do believe that that was our last. Yep, that was our last um, senator report. So now, uh, just a reminder: we do have one vacancy. That position remains open for residential life. Um, if you know people who want to serve these last couple of weeks, um, just have them go apply on Engage. Okay, moving on to new business. We have three proposed bylaw amendments from the Constitution Commission today. Um, so they have come to Senate for our consideration. Um, I believe that this is would be following the two week process. So today they would be introduced and you'd have a chance to have questions. And then next week we would go into discussion and vote on them. So um, Senator Bigd is the uh, commission chair. So if, you're available. I think I would yield to you to introduce these motions or these bylaws. Yes, and I am actually going to yield to Andrew Trenny. If is that allowed right now? If you'll accept the yield, Lydia. Great. Will you accept the yield, Trenny? Thanks. Sure. <laughs> So yeah, I was at the Constitution Commission, and I the reason why I'm presenting and not um, Senator Big is I. I don't know, I worked on some of the writing for it. I didn't come up with the writing, by the way, from what I'm gonna show. So just so everyone knows, it's, I just know how to speak about it. So the number one, one first proposal, I don't know the order, I'm just gonna go top down in here. And the red you see in here is basically the change the commission unanimously voted to send to us for our consideration, basically changing the structure of the student government president's cabinet and creating the expanded cabinet or extended cabinet rather. Um, so basically the president's cabinet shall include the student government president, the student, the speaker, or the vice president, the speaker, uh, the Senate office manager, and then our student government advisor. And then the extend, extended cabinet will it, would, or shall include the president, VP, speaker, Senate office manager, student government advisor, 
city and local affairs coordinator, public relations and marketing coordinator, the diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator, and the student affairs and academic affairs coordinator, and then the other things down here. We do that now, and that, that's the justification of why we wanted it to just change it in our governing documents of putting what we do in reality into practice. So right now, um, Speakers Verso, Vice President Maltari, and I, and our office manager and, and our advisor, John, we meet probably every other week or, you know, over the summer we met pretty like weekly. Um, and so that doesn't draw in our whole coordinator team, but usually we do have those once a month for our coordinators and we haven't had them this semester. But that again clarifies the reason why you may ask for clarification is just clarifying that we have a smaller cabinet and then the extended cabinet. And that models off of President Downport and the university cabinet, where it's President Downport, his vice presidents, and then as the cabinet, and then the extended cabinet is all the deans and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure it's all the deans um, to an extent, associate vice presidents and stuff like that. Um, so it doesn't change anything besides just changing a couple words. Um, so yeah, and then I'll go to the next one. Um, so this other section down here is amending Article three of the student government Constitution, or bylaws, basically adding in a new section where it says, and it reads, all coordinators are appointed by the student government president who provides work direction, who provides work direction and supervision. As such, the student government president is held accountable for the performance of the coordinators. Coordinators are at will employees and they may be removed from their positions by action of the student government president at any time. Coordinators who have lost the confidence of the student government president may be terminated by the president without clause. Cause such action shall be noted in the consent agenda of the student senate meeting immediately following the termination. The termination cannot be appealed to the senate. Basically, there's more, if people aren't familiar, there's more than one way to remove a coordinator and even just a senator, by the way. Um, we have something called the Ethics and Standards Commission, um, where it hears complaints um, like not someone not doing their job or someone not coming to senate or someone not doing their office salaries. The problem we have run into in the past is that commission not, not a fault of mine or, or my predecessor or even their predecessor has been vacant. Um, this year we haven't had a, a working commission. Last year we didn't have a working commission. And the problem where that runs into is where senators aren't stipend and literally, you know, I've always said, I don't agree that if you aren't doing your hours or whatever, you shouldn't be removed from Senate because you're elected by students. But when you have, when you talk about coordinators who are being recommended to have a thousand dollar stipends, if they're not performing the functions of student government at a basic rate, there needs to be immediate action because they're paid, right? Um, the difference between a senator and a, and a coordinator, like I said, like this, the coordinators are paid a thousand dollars. That's 500, 500 a semester. And so if they're literally just sitting there doing nothing and we have no commission because no one wants to be on it, they're literally getting free money from us and the student body. And that's not reflective of what we want to do. We want to be able to have our coordinators who normally do awesome work. Every one of the coordinators this year has done an awesome job, even the ones last year. We just want another tool in that toolbox to basically ensure that we're spending money on coordinators who are doing their job instead of just hiring them, appointing them in August and, you know, having them do what the work they want. And I do supervise the coordinators as well and provide the direction. So that's that one. Uh, and again, I didn't come up with this writing. <laughs> Commission did, not me. Um, it was just my idea. The other thing down here, and this is from the budget meeting and very, I think the first two are very easy changes or the first, the first one and the third one, this one, basically it's just changing the 650 down here in our stipends to a thousand since we did that last meeting where we increased our budget and approved, basically approved the student government budget request of paying a coordinator a thousand dollars each. We're putting that in writing. Um, and the reason why you may be like, well, why are we putting that in writing? Because now basically when, the, so next year's student government, the years after, these are contracted obligations in which student government has to pay. Right, so we have to pay the vice president 5,600. They can of course reject the payment. No one says you can't take it or reject it. But basically we're putting into our governing documents that we pay our five coordinators $1,000 each um, instead of just the 650 now or whatever the months now. Um, so that's just, again, we did it last meeting. So it's just a number change. And the reason why these are red by the way is because we, they were very, the people who wrote this were very confused on our coordinators since we did change them a couple times now. So I'll yield for any questions on the three. Are there any questions? Senator Flynn. So in the second, hang on, let me pull up my teams here. And I can, I'm still sharing my screen. So I can. Yeah, um, if you wanna scroll down there's a section where it refers to um, the student attorney 
and it calls to section IX, which is which doesn't make sense. What? Do you just want to? Yeah, right there. See, right there. Section three under Article Eight. Yeah, oh, well, that's the of the Constitution. Oh, okay, okay. Not the Bibles. Never mind then. Okay. Are there any other questions, Senator Sweeney? I'm looking at this, and Andrew, uh, President Training, can you go to page six, please? Under the Article Three, you have a Section Two, but there is no Section One. Oh, that one, page five. You notice yeah. that? Oh. You have a numbering issue. And then my question is, at the top paragraph under Article Three, you have public highlighted in red relations and marketing coordinator is that a new title for that person and if so why is section three not highlighted in red also the public and throughout the document will you change some of the name yeah so that's a good clarification this isn't my document by the way the the so a little backstory of why this document was made is it's not mine as everyone saw um david cowan sent this to senate he was we sent him i sent him because i like the formatting they do like you can see like i don't know it's just the formatting i like about it when we edited our our bylaws last end of last year and then begin like beginning of this year i wanted it like in the nice formatting that we traditionally have so i sent it to him and he gave me a call and he was he was like what the sh like yeah he was like why did you guys change so much you know whatever he does agree with whatever but he i don't know why he put public in red the thing to pay attention to is that nothing changed. The title hasn't changed. It's public relations and public relations and marketing coordinator. I, think it's, I, mean, I assume that's the right title. I, um, I said but, I was just wondering why it was highlighted in red on one section but not the other. But that kind of explains it. Yeah, I'm trying to go for continuity, and then like I said, section yeah. one is missing from that document. Yeah, and we'll get him to fix that. I think the other reason why he highlighted some of these names in red is because they're new. The public isn't new, but like the city and local affairs, and then. The diversity, equity, and inclusion part. The equity and inclusion is new to that title, so I think that's why he highlighted it there. I don't know why it wasn't highlighted anywhere else but here, but that's where we're going yeah. with. Which then means that section two basically is all brand new. This was already approved. Section two in this article was already approved. Oh, okay. This was approved October twenty eighth, twenty twenty. So this last last semester. So. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? So seeing no further questions, that's where today we'll stop on these. And then next week we will start with discussion and then vote on them. Awesome. So that concludes our new business, unless there's anything else. Um, Madam Speaker, can we get for next meeting a cleaner copy of this, of what actually is being changed and what is not? Because again, I mean, I brought up a couple of areas that would be changing and they're not highlighted. I'd like to know. Sure. Um, yeah, so I would go ahead and request that. I, Senator Bigged is the chair of that commission. So Senator Bigged, I'd like to request that from the commission. Okay, sounds good. Um, I'll work on that. Wonderful. Um, so let me go ahead and pull up the agenda. Okay, so that is um, at the end of our new business, unless there's anything else. Not seeing anything. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and continue. We have no old business. Um, and so then we're going to go ahead and move on to announcements. Are there any announcements? Are there any announcements? Any announcements? Senator Alsani. Um, as you guys probably know, the, um, the International Student Association are having elections and 
the candidates are having a debate after the student uh, government meeting. It is at 630. And I can probably I can provide the link for this one as well if you want me to. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, one second. This is going to be there. It is. There it is. All right, so that's in the chat. Yeah, so it's at six thirty, guys. Wonderful. Are there any other announcements? Let's see, John. Thank you, Madam Speaker. All right, folks, uh, this has been a busy couple of weeks. Lots of stuff going on. So, uh, as noted in your um, and document that feed those fee packages were there. So hopefully you all felt informed and things about your decision making throughout this. Uh, that's the, the stuff that was shared with you via the full fee folder was uh, had most of those resources available there for you. So um, uh, any questions that you had were shared with those uh, uh, those fee funded areas. So. Um, which there weren't any questions submitted in writing um, ahead of this meeting or last one. So. Um, just a reminder, as we get ready to get into summer and fall, uh, fall registration is open. So, uh, excuse me, summer registration is open. Fall registration, I believe, opens tomorrow for a lot of folks. So um, get your, your fall class schedule set and, uh, and registered for. Um, also, uh, be on the lookout for more election stuff. There was an all-student email that went out from the Election Commission uh, on Monday, I believe is when it went out. Uh, there will likely be another one going out uh, at the end of the day on Friday um, because we have a, another deadline for senator candidate applications on Monday. And then next Wednesday from 12 to 1, there will be a forum with the candidates for president and vice president. So that will take place, uh, I believe, uh, the final location because of the scarcity of space uh, during that 12 to 1 hour and um, the desire to do it um, with a hybrid format. Uh, it's likely to be in an academic space um, because uh, the our, our tech crew is filming graduations stuff in the auditorium at that time. Um, and so we're going to need to uh, go somewhere else, somewhere creative, and then we're, Amber's working on that detail. Um, uh, so election season comes up right away, and uh, it'll be fun. So look forward to working with you on that. So thank you. Wonderful. Any other announcements? No? Okay. Well, I will just add before we adjourn, um, congratulations, senators, on successfully completing a budget season. You guys put in a ton of work, and I think that is reflected in the meetings that we've had. Um, I'd also just like to say in our emails, you will get those updated um, bylaw amendments and anything else as they come out. But seeing no further announcements, we are going to go ahead and go into roll call. Senator Biggs. Present. Senator Gustafson. Here. Senator Gabbard. Here. Senator Vondra. Here. Senator Alimo. Senator Alimo. Senator Mendonca. Present. Senator Partick. Here. Senator Salim. Present. Senator Nemo. Here. Senator Hawk. Senator Hawk. Here. Sorry, I was muted. Senator Khan. Here. Senator Pham. Senator Pham. Senator Al Saudi. Here. Senator Albera. Here. Senator Osman. Here. Senator Stiff. Here. Senator Nelson. Senator Nelson. Senator Sweeney. Here. Senator Ruiz. Here. Senator Wheeler. Here. Senator Thomas. Here. Here. Senator Obasi. Here. Senator Bejarano. Here. Senator Wickman. Here. Senator Hopwood. Here. Senator Flynn. Here. Senator Novak. Howdy. Senator Mecklenburg. Here. President Trenny. Here. Vice President Altari. Here. 
and myself. Okay, wonderful. We are going to go ahead and adjourn at 5.17 today. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you.